Welcome to DCPP.TV from the DLD Women Conference in Munich 2012. My name is uh, Philip Anze. My next guest is Karen Wickery. She's editorial director at Twitter. Welcome, Karen, to the program. Thank you, Philip. So, editorial director at uh, Twitter, what do you do? I work on the communications team, and uh, part of my role is to help our own company communications that are public, uh, having uh, more of more frequent uh, news and information coming from the company, more interesting information behind the scenes, stories, uh, getting to know the employees, and I in every case, being uh, a, a, a having a friendlier, more accessible voice. All right. Um The EU, EU Commission is trying to uh, introduce a legislation that is more or less introducing a quota for women in, 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 in big corporations. You were at Google in a leading position, you are now at Twitter at a leading position, you are a woman obviously. Do you think quotas are a good uh, uh, instrument uh, to, to support women in, in, in big companies? Well, they may be necessary. Um, I hadn't heard about this European legislation till this morning's uh, session. And uh, I believe her, uh, this is for the European Commission, and I think her idea was to legislate for publicly held companies that more women representation be on their boards. Uh, similar discussions go on in the US. And uh, wh whether it's must be quotas, whether it's a company committing its own Uh, uh, to its own goals. Uh, there may be a variety of ways to do it, but obviously it does take a commitment beyond the status quo in order for that to happen. Do you have anything at Twitter to support women? Are, are you being supported in somehow? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, Twitter is full of wonderful women employees, uh, you know, from engineers to business management. And uh, there's quite an emphasis in tech companies today in particular Uh, to s support the idea of women being uh, making careers of engineering. And the reason that's important is within tech companies, these are the people who make the things we're all using, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a key component. Uh, and there's been a shortage of women engineers. So Twitter, for example, uh, has recently announced support for uh, an organization for young women called Girls Who Code. And, and that has to do with supporting, you know, internships, summer camps, uh, all kinds of programs that help girls and young women just uh, uh, get into the notion, understanding what these kind of roles are like, what the work is like, what the rewards are. Uh, because without a basis of, of more girls in, especially science, technology, computer science, those fields, That's where there's a real lack, I think, more than women on the business side. And do you uh, have the impression or the feeling that, that d digital tools um, do help to, to provide women? Do they make tr organizations more transparent? Do they flatten the hierarchies? Does this help women, the digital tools? The, the uh, yeah, uh, if, by, if by digital tools you mean... Uh, yeah, I don't know, blogs, everything Twitter, on the internet, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, all of them. Yes, I think so. I mean, uh, they're, they're for everyone to use, obviously. They're very flattening, democratizing set of tools. First of all, whether it's social media or working in the cloud, let's say. These are all things that uh, really help all of us be more uh, self-expressive, more ubiquitous, and all these kinds of things. But uh, in addition... Yes, for, for women to perhaps feel more comfortable in expressing themselves or taking positions or working out their, their, uh, their own projects yeah. and their opinions. It's a, it's, a, it's a less daunting way, perhaps. So I think they do help women in that way. Uh, let's talk about Twitter a little bit. Um, you have opened, or Twitter have opened, uh, up, uh, has opened up a, 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 an office in Berlin. Uh, two people are working there. Twitter has gained some some you more users in germany i, I, th I wrote uh, i read like four and a half million users uh the last number i wrote which is uh, i think a growth a growth from 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 by one million or so um and i wonder what do these pe two people do in germany i mean well you have to start somewhere when you when you open new offices or go into a new country this is 
very typical, at least from the, the, the tech companies that I know, you start small and you establish a bit of a foothold to make connections, establish business partnerships, get to know the local scene, understand the local issues and concerns. I think this happens everywhere with, uh, with, with tech companies. I, I worked at Google for a long time before Twitter. Same thing in going into new countries, same exact process. Uh, what kind of uh, business relationships are these? What kind of connections do they make? Well, I think it's good to be to, for people to understand Twitter. Sometimes it will involve, in, in, in some places, uh, holding a series of workshops on uh, how Twitter works. For example, it might be helping uh, high-profile people, uh, you know, uh, establish their username and uh, understand about how to tweet and getting followers. Sometimes they may be on already, and it's just letting them know. Uh, it, for example, if uh, a, a football player is already active on Twitter, but maybe others on his team aren't. So it might be, let's get the others on the team, let's get the team itself to have a Twitter account, that, that kind of thing. Um, I, 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 do, I do sometimes uh, workshops myself and, and with Twitter and other social media, and the response I get from, from, from organizations, NGOs, et cetera, is, well, if we introduce Twitter, we have too many voices. Uh, we, we don't have one wise for our NGO or for our company. Uh, you worked at Google, you introduced Google, uh, you introduced blogs in the Google corporate communication. Google has over 70 blogs right now. Many say, well, it's too much. What, what, is, your, what is your thought on, well, a company has to have one voice and if you introduce Twitter and blogs, especially more than one corporate blog into a, into a corporation, well, we cannot control our message. We don't have too many voices. Well, there's a big distinction to make there in your question about what the organizational accounts are, whether they're blogs, Facebook, Twitter, whatever they are, uh, as opposed to individual people doing it on their own, right? So uh, for Twitter has its own Twitter account, right? Uh, Twitter Germany has its own Twitter account. Twitter UK, UK has its own Twitter account. Those aren't individual people tweeting Uh, whatever they like. Those are people who work for those offices tweeting about things related to that subject, Twitter Germany, Twitter UK, etc. So the same idea holds uh, for an NGO. Several people could share an account, for example. They're tweeting on, be they're representing the NGO, right? So they're, they're tweeting things that are relevant to the organization. So it doesn't have to be disparate at all. It could be one person managing it for the agency, the organization, but it could be several people sharing it with the one goal, with the, towards the one voice. Uh, some say, well, okay, you have a Twitter account, you have a blog, but still you have to have some kind of editorial uh, control, but then they say, well, we have to react so fast these days. Yes. And if <laughs> users ask us a question or something happened, they expect immediate response. Yes. How do you combine those two, two things? A little bit of a tutorial and, and corporate yeah. control and an immediate response. Well, the, the, you can have corporate control over the immediate response. You just have to act quickly. You, you can't deliberate. You can't have a committee meeting for you know two days uh, to come back to the response, right? You have to, you have to turn it over quickly. So probably uh, the fewer people involved, the better, the fewer decision makers. But uh, you have an agreed upon plan for these things. So uh, when you need to respond, uh, one thing I've found at companies is often they will say, we don't have an answer yet. We don't know what happened or we, we, we don't have our explanation together. We can't say anything. Uh, to which I would advise, say that you're looking into it. Say that you're aware of the problem and that you're sorry. You know, while while you need to have the immediate response, don't don't just be silent while you're collecting the answer. That's not that's not good enough. As you say, you have to move quickly. And is that a, also uh, a way to deal with with mistakes, with errors, a company or an NGO, or whatever yeah, you make? Yeah, that's right. No, What's same your same idea. What is your same idea? So that if when you have a mistake, uh, it, and maybe it's something that takes some consideration to explain we changed our policy or we've come to a different decision now uh, you, you know you consider what you're going to say but then you figure out when's the best time to say it when when people will see it so that it's not uh, on the middle of a weekend where it seems hidden 
but then you know you you then prepare for maybe you have a feedback mechanism maybe you say we want your answers to this we'll read your comments we'll respond to your comments we'll tweet back to you what whatever the whatever the platform is you're using you want to be able to to let people know you care about what they think about your position. Does the introduction of, of Twitter and other social media into NGOs and corporations and institutions mean that uh, the power is delegated away from the center, that you have to delegate power to certain people yes. and say, well, you now have the authority to write something in the name yeah. of uh, a company? That yes, yes is the answer. Yeah. That does happen more. And, and it, how do you do? How do you communicate it to 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 to, to corporate, yeah, uh, power structures? I mean. Well, it, I mean, you you need buy-in from uh, from the head of the NGO, the head of the corporation. They have to understand that uh, this is the arrangement. You can't have you can't afford a lot of bottlenecks uh, when you have to respond so quickly, and when you have to be uh, very sensitive to what people are expressing online, right? What the mood is, so. You have to understand that going into it, and then, uh, it, then it's. It, I mean, I haven't experienced very, very many problems where this comes up because people understand this is the mechanism, this is the platform, this is how it works. We delegate, you know, certain people to be able to respond quickly. Um, if it's especially complicated, we'll review it quickly. But it, that the key word is quickly, and then. Uh, you know, roll out our response, our next steps as fast as we can. In your talk here on the DLD, you described uh, different aspects of Twitter, the, the personal use, the personal marketing mm -hmm. uh, use, yeah. the uh, news channel, Twitter as a news channel, uh, Twitter, Twitter as a yeah, sensor of what's going on, uh, earthquakes, etc. Uh, where, where, where is Twitter going? In, 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 in which, which I of these aspects is going to be uh, stressed in, in the future? I, I, I think they, the answer is all. Uh, there's, there's, there's no limit to the, the kinds of uses Twitter can be put to because people are, are using it for what they need to use it for, what they want to use it for. That, that's the whole beauty of the Twitter platform is It's, it's open to human expression, and human expression takes many forms, and we've seen many kinds of uses, and I think we'll continue to. I think um, people, people will be inventive and creative, and in, whether it's in a natural disaster or uh, you know, in, in a, a way that has to do with the arts and creativity, people will find interesting uses for it that it delights us because uh, we don't know the answer to you know where is Twitter going we know that usage continues uh, the real-time aspect of it has become quite compelling to people to, to understand I, I often will say to my friends I watched the news on Twitter I watched the game unfold on Twitter I watched it on Twitter because I watched my stream and saw what people were saying and I understood so we often say, universe is in a tweet. Um, uh, in the beginning, Twitter became pretty successful also because there were so many clients and developers did so many different things with what Twitter offered as an infrastructure. And in the, in the, in the last year or so, in the months, um, yeah, Twitter said to the developers, well, you better don't write clients anymore. We'll do that to the board, some important clients. And uh, is, it, is it a step to take more control over the usage, over the, the, the user interface, and over the uh, techniques and clients uh, with which people use Twitter? Uh, I would say that Twitter cares very much about the developer community, but what developers work on, uh, we'd like to establish a, a full platform for developers and a full API so that uh, developers can work on top of that. We do care about how the Twitter experience is shown, uh, how, the, how, the, how the, the Twitter feed appears in other clients, and in, in whether people can click on all the links we intend them to click on that we designed Twitter for, that's, that sort of thing. So we do care about that. Uh, but then we look to developers to add other pieces of uh, interesting functionality and broader use cases 
than, than we would be able to. We're interested in the, a, f a full, rich platform on which developers can, can build and develop other things. Um, the, 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 I only know the Mac client. The Mac client has been updated for quite a while, and I wonder if, if, if Twitter tries to introduce the web interface as the interface on, on, on stationary PCs and, 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 and computers. Okay, mobile is a different thing. But is the web client on a PC the default interface? No, no, there's no, uh, we want a, a uniform experience across whatever device you're on, whatever machine you're on. So there, there's, not a, there's not a default of one to the other. Uh, we're, we're working to make them all as uniform in functionality and consistent so that it doesn't matter which, which device you're on. You may choose, you may be traveling, you may have different devices that you use and the experience should be the same on all. Okay, so because the web, I have the impression that many or much emphasis has been uh, on on the on the web interface more than on the on the on the desktop clients. I think, uh, and and I've only been at Twitter uh, for about eight months now, so I don't know the the full history. My sense is that, uh, as often happens, um, sometimes things appear first on the web and then migrate to mobile. In, in Twitter's case, I mean, we're very keen on mobile and mobile being, you know, uh, as rich. Uh, there may be some catch-up involved, but in all, in all cases, it's meant to be a uniform experience. Um, if you just could do, last question, what you would want it to do, what, what would be a thing you, you'd like to do, introduce in, in, into Twitter? What would you like to change or uh, do better? What kind of vision do you wish, wish to have for, for Twitter? Well, I mean, I love Twitter as it is, so it's hard for me to think about, you know, any uh, any massive change because I, I think Twitter's on a very exciting course. Uh, for me personally, I was excited just recently we announced, uh, announced a better search functionality. And one thing I know is when I'm traveling, like here this morning, Alanis Morissette was here. And so I mistakenly, I couldn't, it was hard to tweet and look up her proper account name at the same time. So I wanted to be sure I had, that I was referring to her as at Morissette, which is, is her name. And I made a mistake because I didn't see the options fully in Twitter. So I, I'm looking forward to the search being, you know, a, a faster fix for me that I can see. Oh, here's someone I want to put in right away. Uh, if, since you mentioned search, wh wh why has search been so, so weak uh, on Twitter? Because... I couldn't answer that, I uh, don't know. And what is getting better now? Well, you'd have to reference, uh, we just posted this week, actually, since I've been traveling, uh, about some enhanced search capabilities that make it easier for looking up uh, people and accounts, uh, and uh, again, across the clients. Okay, but you cannot search uh, all the tweets then 30 days or so. Don't think that changed, yeah. It's a pity, don't you think? Think about where, where they all live, you know. Uh, there's a billion tweets now every three days. That's, that's a lot of tweets. Uh, okay, Karen. Yeah. Thank you very much for yeah. the time. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah. All right.